and we're back for another episode. In this episode, I'm going to be doing my first A Realm Reborn lore video covering the 12. So I'm joined today by Zelly, Texture Pack, and Panda. Say hello. 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 So where we are right now is the Sanctum of the Twelve in East Shroud, which is right here, north of Hawthorne Hut. And the circles that you can see right here um, do have significance because these represent the Twelve. So the first one down here is Halone the Fury. The next one is uh, Menfina the Lover. The next is uh, Falk, the Scholar, then Nimia, the Spinner, then uh, Limlian, the Navigator, then Ochan, the Warrior, then Bygar, the Builder, Ralgar, the Destroyer, Azime, the Warden, now Nald Fal the Traders Nofika the ma Matron and a Felk the Keeper. Now in Final Fantasy XIV A Realm Reborn, the twelve represent the greater power, let's say. So the creator of everything essentially is Hydalin, which is the big crystal, the big white light crystal which gives you all of your power and protects you from the primals and so on. But the Twelve were also created by Hydaelyn to serve Hydaelyn, essentially. So, reading from um, a Final Fantasy website, a wiki website, which I'm going to link in the description, it says the Twelve are the Pathion of Eorzea in Final Fantasy XIV, consisting of twelve benevolent deities who ruled the continent and its surrounding islands until the arrival of the wandering tribes. During the game's character creation, players must align to one of the twelve uh, deities which slightly affect elemental resistances. Now the way to check if you can't remember which one you are aligned to is to open up your character window, go to profile, and it's right here, Guardian. So in my case, I'm aligned with Ochon, the warrior. And one thing we're going to be doing in this video, we're going to be visiting um, each of the stones around the game, which has bears the mark of one of the 12. And then we'll explain a bit more about the 12 as we go. And we're going to do it in the order that I stated, starting with the first one, which is Halon the Fury. So, let's go. Okay, so we've arrived at the cave uh, called the Fury's Gaze, which is at 731 in Corfu Central Highlands. And this is the place of Halone the Fury. And on this rock, you can just barely, if I indicate with my mouse, make out the three spears. Barely. So this is the location for Halone the Fury. And it says, Halone, mover of glaciers and goddess of war, commands the elements of ice and is tied to the first astral moon, as in the first month. She is depicted as a relentless warrior holding a bronze great shield and her symbol is three spears. Halone is also the patron of the Holy See of Ishgard and is bitter rivals with Nofika. Okay, so if we do maybe a slash pray for this rock as part of our quest to visit the Twelve. Okay, so now on to the next place for Menfina the Lover. So now we are at the stone of Menfina the Lover, and this is located in Corfa Central Highland 22.8. So this is her symbol. It says Menfina, keeper of the once twin and now lone moons 
and goddess of love commands the elements of ice and is associated with the first umbral moon as in the second month she is depicted as a maid carrying a round skillet her symbol is the full greater moon sister of azima and the divine lover of ochon okay let's do a quick slash pray Okay, so let's now move on to Falek, the Scholar. So we're now at the stone for Faliak the Scholar. We're here at 1817 in Mordona. So right down here. And this is a symbol. So it says, Faliak, the ruler of rivers and wisdom and god of knowledge, commands the element of water and is tied to the second astral moon, as in the third month. He is depicted as a reserved scholar holding an ashen staff, and his symbol is the scroll. Uh, Faliak is also Biagot's teacher and the patron of Sharlian. So... I believe, Zali, that this is your guardian, right? Mm-hmm. Cool. So let's give our mutual respect and do a slash pray. And now on to the next one. Nimia the Spinner. Okay, so we're now here with Nimia the Spinner. We are at Lower Lanosia 2637, which is right here, just southeast of Morabi Dry Docks. So it says, Nimia, the watcher of celestial bodies and goddess of faith, commands the elements of water and is associated with the second umbral moon, as in the fourth month. She is depicted as a weaver donning a white silken veil. Her symbol is the spinning wheel, eldest sister of a Felk and master of Ralga. Okay, so let's show our respects. I believe that this is Panda's guardian as well. Yep. So let's do slash pray. Cool. So now we'll be off to... Lil, Lil Milian, <laughs> Lil Milian, the navigator. Okay, so now we are here with uh, Lim Lian, the navigator, and this is actually located in Limsa Lamenza Upper Decks 714. So right here, and this is the symbol right there. You can see on this fountain. So it says. Uh, Lim Lian, watcher of the seas and goddess of navigation, commands the element of wind and is tied to the third astral moon, as in the fifth month. She is depicted as a strong fisherwoman holding a long bladed harpoon, and her symbol is the wave. Uh, Lim Lian is also the patron of Limza Laminza, which makes sense. Okay, so let's now stand on her pedestal and do a slash pray okay so now we're going to be off to my guardian who is Ochon the Wanderer so now we are here with Ochon the Wanderer and we're here at Outer Lenosia 2518, right here. Now this one, I actually have to kind of stand back for this because it's the symbol is much bigger than the other ones, that's for sure. And this is also my guardian. So it says, Ochon, ruler of the mountains and god of vagrants, commands the element of wind and is associated with the third umbral moon, as in the sixth month. He is depicted as a carefree ranger wielding a bow of view. His symbol is the walking stick. Brother of 
Naldfell and close companion of Halon. He was the patron of the ancient city of Nim. Cool. So, and I decided to have him as my guardian as well because of the fact he's a ranger and has bow and arrow and so on as well. So, let's do slash pray. Okay, next we need to go to Bygart. And now we are here with Bygart the Builder. We are here at 1527 in South Shroud, just northwest of Camp Tranquil. And you can see the symbol right here. So it says, Bygart, purveyor of architecture and industry and god of the arts, commands the element of lightning and is tied to the fourth astral moon, as in the seventh month. Bygar is depicted as an ardent smith holding a two-headed hammer, and his symbol is the hand. Bygar is also uh, Faliak's pupil, and given that Bygar's blessing is pretty much the best ability of all of Disciple of the Hand, then it makes sense why he has such a strong link to crafting, you know, makes perfect sense. So, okay, let's do a slash pray. Right, and now off to Ralgar the Destroyer. So we are now here with Ralgar the Destroyer, and we are at Southern Fanaland 1914, right next to the little Alamigo Aetherite crystal. I have to go up the ramp to find it. And it says, Ralgar, breaker of worlds and god of destruction, commands the element of lightning and is tied to the fourth umbral moon, as in the eighth month. He is depicted as a Magi carrying a bronze and staff, and his symbol is the striking, or streaking, I should say, meteor. Father of both Bygar and Halone, attendant to Nemea, and guardian deity of the now fallen nation of Alamigo. So let's do a slash pray. Because whether they're, you know, ruler of destruction or ruler of love, you know, they're still a ruler, so there has to be respect shown in terms of law and whatever. So next is Azima the Warden. So let's go. So we're now here with Azima the Warden. And the location is 2429 Eastern Fanaland. So that's kind of dry bone there. We're right here. And there's a random bottle on the floor as well. So it says, Azima, keeper of the sun and goddess of inquiry, commands the elements of fire and is tied to the fifth astral moon, as in the ninth month. She is depicted as a noble lady holding a golden fan, and her symbol is the radiant sun, even though you can barely make it out <laughs> for some reason. So, okay, let's do a slash pray. Right, so next to Naldfall, the traders. So we're here with Naldfall, the traders, and Naldfall has actually got two locations in Uldar. This first one, we're in the Uldar Steps of Nald at 712, which is within the Pharmaturgist Guild. And it says, Nardfal, overseer of transactions and the underworld and god of commerce, commands the element of fire and is tied to the fifth umbral moon, as in the tenth month. Nardfal is depicted as a discerning merchant holding a balance, and his symbol is the cowry. Nardfal is actually the single manifestation of the twins, Nald and Fal. So let's pray to this one and pray to the next one.
Okay, so the quickest way to get to the other one is to teleport using the Aethernet straight to the Miner's Guild, and it's a short run from there. So let's do that now, Miner's Guild. Do you see the symbol anywhere? Nope. The NPC here has black mage armor, but it's died. Yeah, this is the people you talk to for the black mage quest. So I wonder if so it's actually supposed to be... Um, actually, this one NPC, um, he says he's a servant of Nalth Nalthal. Um, it saddens him that, uh, let's put Skart. Doubt. Yeah, if you've done the Black Mage quest line, then Lele talks and represents Null the whole time. The talk says through, like, let's Null's words come through him, so let's, let's just pray to him. <laughs> okay. We pray to you, O Lalafell. Right, so next is Nofika the Matron, so let's go. And we're here with Nofika the Matron. So this is located at 712 in Olgridania, and this is the big rock right up here above the entrance to the Conjurer Guild. And it says, Nofika, tender of soils and harvests and goddess of abundance commands the element of earth and is tied to the sixth astral moon as in the 11th month she is depicted as a jubilant farmer holding a steel scythe, and her symbol is the spring leaf nofika is also the patron of gridania that's cool so that's obviously a much more significant symbol as you can see up there so let's do a slash pray. And last but not least, we need to go to a Felk the Keeper. And here we are with the twelfth and last of the twelve called a Felk the Keeper. We are here at 2325 in South Shroud, next to the entrance of Anderbal Keep, just south of Quarry Mill. So it says, A Felk, the surveyor of change and god of space and time, commands the element of Earth and is associated with the sixth umbral moon, as in the twelfth month. He is depicted as an um, Aster Emperor wielding a mithril great axe. His symbol is the hourglass. Father of Azima and Menfina, an elder brother to Nimia. So this symbol um, of the hourglass, if you actually watch the original A Realm Reborn trailer, at the moment when Louis Soi teleports the Warriors of Light into the future, if you pause it just at that moment, you see this hourglass symbol in the middle of the spell. And the reason why is because he's using a Felk's power for space and time, for traveling through time, which only the most powerful scholars can do. So, again, let's slash pray. In remembrance. <laughs> yep. And then, this is also Texture Pack's Guardian as well. Yep. So now, let's return to the Sanctum of the Twelve, because we have now finished our visiting of these stones and we'll finish the rest of the lore right there and so that ends our journey of discovery around eorzea we have visited all of the 12 stones around the game and we've read a bit about each of the 12 as well so the overall story which is written says the 12 were likely created by hydalin the deity who created the world which is named after her their exact early history is unknown, as it's possible 
re relations to deity Zodiac, Hydaelyn's enemy and opposite. The Twelve took up re residence in the land which became known as Eorzea. Each of the Twelve commands one of the six elements but shares it with another deity and is associated with a month of the Eorzean calendar. They held rule over the land until the arrival of the wandering tribes, the Elazan, Makote, Lalafell, Rogadin, and Hyur. Impressed by the tribes' resourcefulness and resilience, the Twelve ceded the land to them. Several of them are patron deities of Eorzea's cities. Also resident in Eorzea were the beast tribes, groups of monstrous beings who worshipped deities known as the primals. They play a crucial part in patch 1.23 of the original Final Fantasy XIV. After Nail Van Darnis is defeated by a group of adventurers, the Ellison scholar Louis Soir um, Levi Lur stated that Meteor, Hydaelyn's lesser moon Dalamud, cannot be halted even with the death of Nal, who was acting as a living beacon for the moon. Now the only hope for saving Eorzea from destruction was to summon the power of the Twelve and beseech them to save the land from ruin. Their symbols appear on stones across Eorzea at this time, at which the player must pray. Louis Soir goes to the Cartano Plains in Mordona, where the forces of the Galian Empire and the Eorzean Alliance meet in battle. As they clash, Dalamud disintegrates above them, releasing the elder primal Bahamut. Bahamut proceeds to unleash its fury on Eorzea, but Louis Soir, with the help of the Circle of Knowing, summons the aid of the Twelve. Their symbols appear around Bahamut in the attempt to siphon the Aether from Bahamut and reseal him. But the primal proves too strong and the scheme fails. Bahamut's fury instigates the Seventh Umbral Era. In A Realm Reborn, they are compared to the primals by Gaius van Balsar, who regards them as um, e Econs and insinuates that they could be summoned with sufficient crystals. This is supported by a plot element in Little Anamigo involving a abandoned scheme by young refugees who hope to steal the Amalgia's crystal supply in order to summon Ralgar to enact vengeance on the Galian Empire. So that's basically it. So that's the story. So what they basically have said is that during 1.0 they did visit all of these stone locations that we went to, but they've obviously been moved because given that the Calamity basically destroyed most of yours and reshaped it. And as well, they tried their best to get rid of Bahamut, but they weren't able to. And for those who have done Turn 5, you will know what I'm talking about, but I won't spoil it for the rest. And as well what they're saying is that they believe the 12 are almost almost like primals and during the main scenario quest you do look at the Asions and the Asions do talk about Hydaelyn's eff effectively evil twin brother Zodiac which is the dark crystal so it says enemy and opposite so if Hydaelyn is the light then Zodiac is the darkness so we will see what is next in the lore and the story of Final Fantasy XIV A Realm Reborn. We will see if we ever get to meet the Twelve. We'll see if we ever get into the Sanctum of the Twelve and so on. So anyway, that's it for this episode. Thank you for watching. If you like this style of video, please let me know. This was almost an experiment for me to see how it would turn out. And I've also linked in the description the links to where I was reading all this information from and also back to the original A Realm Reborn trailer in case you want to link up what we spoke about to those videos and to that website. So goodbye from me, goodbye from Mifri, from Texture Pack, from Zelly and from Panda. See ya. Bye. Bye.